Okay, excellent. We start the recording. So good afternoon and welcome everyone to the Virtual Head Student Leadership Showcase Tour, English edition. My name is Yvelkis Montalvo, Executive Director of Heads, and I will be your host today. One of the objectives of this event is to promote the wide variety of services available free of charge. In addition, today we will share a presentation of two experts resources about the topic student leadership development through global learning opportunities. These services and events are part of the HEADS mission of supporting your academic goals and increase your chances of success to take your goals to the next level. Before we start, we would like to remind you that this event is being recorded for your future reference and to share it with students who were not able to connect today. So please keep your microphones mute to avoid any interruptions. We will share the link to the recording on our website and, on, and also we will announce that the link is ready on our social media accounts one, uh, once the recording is ready to, to watch. Today, we are delighted to have over 300 participants registered from more than 40 institutions in Puerto Rico, in the US and in Latin America. We welcome all participants who accepted our invitation to this virtual Student Leadership Showcase Tour, English edition. Also, we would like to thank all the deans and by presidents of student affairs, counselors, directors, faculty and students of our member institutions for their valuable collaboration to help us promote this event. In particular, we welcome participants from our institutions in Puerto Rico, see their names on the live slideshow. And also I have been mentioning the names in the chat. Please put your names and um, please let us know from which institution you are. Uh, so everybody knows uh, you're here. And we also welcome participants from more than 20 institutions in the US and also from international institutions. Uh, and you can see the names, especially our member institution in Colombia, Universidad Cooperativa de Colombia. And we also have our new member institution in Ecuador, Instituto Tecnológico. And also we have one institution from Mexico, Universidad de Sonora. So welcome all of you. You are the real protagonists of this event and everything we have planned has been thinking about you and all and thank you for your interest and time today. Before we start, we would like to emphasize that you can use the chat to write down your questions, either in English and Spanish, don't worry, we can translate it uh, to the speakers when the time comes. Remember to keep your microphones muted to avoid interruptions. And remember that to obtain a certificate, the ones that have been in our webinars be before already know, but for the new uh, participants, to obtain a certificate uh, of partici certificate, excuse me, of participation, and also participate in the raffle that we have at the end of the event, you need to submit your information by clicking on the link indicated on the chat or through the QR code that you can uh, uh, access through your camera on your phone. To win raffle prizes, remember you must be present at the end when we paint the wheel and the certificates will be sent on the next two weeks only to those who complete this form. So please make sure that you put your name correctly and also your email correctly, because if not, the email will not get through with your certificate. Also, at the end of the event, you will receive by email the link to complete a brief survey to help us evaluate this event and to learn also more about how it can support your needs and interests remember your feedback is very important to us and with your feedback we can definitely continue improving these events for you and also all your ideas and recommendations are more than welcome likewise we invite you to join us in our next events and ask you to help us promote it invite others to register to participate and benefit from these events too please and 
All just as, as you may know already, all these events are free of charge and will be held virtually through Zoom. You only need to register to participate and receive the link to connect. Finally, we want to invite you to visit the Student Placita. Those are the next events. At the end, I will give you more information, but just to let you know where are the next events. This is the Student Placita. Uh, and, and there you can find a variety of online support services free of charge, including the access to databases like the Peterson Test Prep. And in the next slide, you can see that there you can find scholarships uh, from technical uh, studies to doctor, master's and doctor degrees, also practice tests and download ebooks to get prepared for tests such as PCAT. LSAT, GRE, NCAT, and that, among a lot of others. And to access the Peterson test spread, follow a few steps and click on the name of your, insti on your institution, uh, the name of your institution, and enter the passcode. If you don't know the passcode, you have the opportunity today to write the name of your institution in the chat, and either me or Dr. Karen Rivera, our uh, a consultant for student services, will give you, will send you the code of your institution in a private uh, message on the chat. And also you can send us an email at info at heads.org and we also can give you the access to the, to the, uh, with the code. Uh, likewise, at uh, the Student Placita, you can also access the Peterson Career Fred, and in this database, you can search for jobs and internships, create your resume, and find career advice among, among other services. Use the same passcode to access the database, the database, and remember, if you don't have the passcode, write the name of your institution on the chat or send us an email at info at heads.org. We invite you to take full advantage of these services and to follow up in, so in the social media networks that you will see in the next slide. You can go to either Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, so you can learn about our upcoming events and services. And please do not hesitate to contact us if you need more information. Now, we are pleased to present our main speakers of this virtual Student Leadership Showcase Tour. Uh, today we have Dr. Marta Jo Asselin from University of Albany, SUNY. And we have, direct from Germany, Dr. Dominic Hammer, who will be sharing the topic Student Leadership Development through Global Learning Opportunities. But first, let me share a summary of our speaker's professional background. Let's start with ladies. Uh, Dr. Marta Asselin served as the director of the Center for Leadership and Service of the University of Albany, where she has introduced the institution to an interdisciplinary leadership minor, served learning opportunities, and various uh, leadership development opportunities that include short-term st short study abroad experience, for example, winter session service in Puerto Rico. Her 33 years of professional experience includes serving as the acting, as acting president of a community college, also over 20 years as the vice president of student affairs. And for the last year, she co-facilitates an innovative method of teaching and learning that leverage online technology methods uh, technology, excuse me, to deliver global learning and intercultural experience in the classroom. Now let's talk about Dr. Dominic Hammer. Yeah. Uh, he's our uh, second speaker today, together with Dr. Uh, Celine, and he serves as Vice Dean International in the Department of Business Administration at Munich University of Applied, Applied Sciences. And his curriculum vita uh, includes 13 years of a professional service and educational experiences with over 13 years of experience in the Federal Armed Forces of Germany, Mo Mountain Infantry. And in 2013, he became the founding partner of Blue Mountain Spirit Alpine School in Neusdorf, 
I hope I pronounce it well, in German. For the last year, he co-facilitates an innovative method of technology and learning that leverage online technologies to develop global learning and intercultural experience in the classroom. This is the first time we are so excited and delighted that this is the first time we have a speaker from Germany together with a speaker in the US on one of our member institutions, University of Albany. And thank you both again for your valuable collaboration. In the meantime, our speakers shared their presentation. Remember that at the end, we will have a Q&A session. Um, please, when you share your presentation, remember to sh uh, click share audio. Uh, so the videos can be heard. And, but but uh, we have a QA and a session, but you can also uh, uh, use the chat to write down your question during the presentation as well. Uh, so you don't remember your question. And if it's something that you need clarification, I will interrupt the speakers so they can uh, clarify the point right away. And finally, remember to submit your information by clicking the link indicated in the chat that will be we will be posting the, the, the links on the chat uh, periodically. So you don't miss the opportunity to enter uh, the raffle and also request your certificate of, of participation. Now, please help me welcome our speakers today. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Yubelski. I appreciate this. Um, Dominique and I are grateful to be here. We have two students that are gonna be presenting with us as well. Um, HETS has been a wonderful organization, and so thank you for all that you do. I want to give a quick apology. I don't know what's going on with my camera today. It is not working. I'm here with you, and I'm grateful to be here. So, Dominic, I see you, and I'm ready to go with our presentation. That's perfect. Well, unfor unfortunately, my camera is working and not yours. <laughs> so it would have been the better choice, I guess, but now you have to live with oh, it. Oh, that's all right. Thank you. Um, so Dominique and I, as you heard from our introductions, we have not ever met face to face. All of our interact interactions have been through Zoom and you know connecting with each other through the internet, which is beautiful. We look forward to someday meeting each other face to face because I don't yeah. think I could ask for a better partner to be Great. served. So maybe Hits can help us on that, but let's talk about it. <laughs> Go that ahead. That would be wonderful. So we have our story to share, and we're so proud of our story. It's just our narrative of how we came to meet each other and how this course has really thrived. We've taught this course for three semesters. We do have some students that are currently in the class with us. We also have some videotapes to share of students who have taken the course with us previously. So Dominique, I don't know if you want to jump in and say anything before I go to the next slide. No? OK. So just quickly, we wanted to go over the agenda. This is what we hope to cover today. Um, we want to share just a quick overview about how our partnership came to be. We want to then, um, I want to explain about the Center for Leadership and Service and the work that we used to do really got disrupted from COVID. So I'm going to share with you about how that disruption actually led to new innovative approaches to doing what we used to do. Um, we'll talk about the team-based learning and the leadership experience that we offer within this classroom setting, as well as we're going to talk about um, the attention that this course has brought, whether it be from our own college institutional presidents, but um, some local media coverage that we've gotten. It has been great reviews from students, so we wanted to share that. We have, um, we're going to talk to you about what it's like when a student completes the course and the certificates that are awarded, as well as we really want to spend time. We have two amazing students, Ada Rusick and JT Stone are going to be with us, and you actually get to uh, question them. Uh, they'll share a little bit about their experience in the current class that's being held. And then we'll follow up uh, with question and answer session. So Dominique, I don't know if you want to jump is, in. Yeah, uh, anytime. This is how we got to know each other. I guess it all started in February 2020, right before the first lockdown came to Germany and all over the world, I guess, um, when um, the um, UAS7 collaboration of seven University of Applied Sciences of Germany, where Munich University of Applied Sciences is member at, um, joined the um, international virtual academic collaboration that has been launched by the Academic Exchange Service of Germany. Um, and as UAS7 is partnering with uh, SUNY at Albany, um, we, we had a call for 
for lecturers, I guess, Martha, it was called a call for lecturers who wanted to join, who wanted to give it a chance to, to collaborate on an, yeah, rather more experimental setting. And this is how we found together. We just listed our research areas, the areas of interest, the areas of lectures. Um, and then we met finally uh, for the first time, I guess in it was February, um, late February, 2020. And we set it up within less than one month because we get started by then in the middle of March, um, that is towards uh, the second part, the second half of the US semester and the start of the German semester. So we had to deal with different semester times, but that was rather easy as we agreed on that we just give it a try and start it off and kick it off. And this is where we are at. We, we received some, some uh, support of course, from COIL Center at SUNY, great support given to us in order to set up um, a, a logic structure um, and also some meetings by the UAS7 um, Virtual Academy. That helped, um, but I guess what was even more helpful is that we could get along with each other, Maza, wasn't it? Yes, it is. You're a great partner to have on this journey with. Yes, you will see that all of our slides recognize at the very bottom, we do what's happening between Dominique and my class and how this magic is working is really because of all those agencies at the bottom of the screen, they came together. But I do wanna give one big shout out from my end at UAlbany, there's an amazing soul, Dr. Annette Ritchie. I had approached her and said, here's what I do. And she's like, I'm gonna set you up with this COIL, which is collaborative online um, uh, learning that takes place. And she has been great. I think she's on the call today. So shout out to Dr. Annette Ritchie for all that you do. She works at our Center for International Education and Global Strategies. Um, long and short, she was the matchmaker that introduced me to Dominique. That's right, absolutely. Thanks, Annette. Hello. Yes. Thank you, Annette. She gave us a heart, a virtual heart. <laughs> oh, did she? Okay. Yeah. yeah our next Very slide. good. I apologize, whatever's happening. There we go. So I want to just talk a little bit about the Center for Leadership and Service. Five years ago, when our new president started, um, Dr. Um, Avidan Rodriguez, he is a visionary. He's amazing. He's great to work for. Um, he had a vision working with the Vice President for Student Affairs about opening up a Center for Leadership and Service. And I am blessed to be the inaugural director for that Center for Leadership and Service. The Center falls in alignment with our School of Education. And shout out to those from the School of Education at UAlbany that are also joining us today. Um, we work very closely with the School of Education. We have a leadership minor that has been rolled out. And so much of the students that we have from UAlbany that are participating in this course that you're gonna hear about are students that also have a connection to the School of Education and to our leadership minor. The Center for Leadership and Service, you're looking at our mission statement. It is really built on, it's an inclusive, respectful environment. And our goal is really to build 21st century global leaders. We want people to go out there and change the world for the better. We do that in many different ways. This course is just one of the ways, it's probably my most proudest way that we do it. And I think when you meet our students, you'll understand why. Our tagline is learn to lead, be a leader, serve through leader. And as you heard earlier, the University of Albany is also a HETS organization. But I also want to throw out there that we are um, just recently recognized as we're a research one university. There's four within the State University of New York system. We are one, but we were recognized as being the most diverse research one institution, which is a beautiful compliment because when you hear about Dominique's students, those students are very international students that are studying at his institution. And so combined with our students offers a beautiful experience for everybody involved. Do you want to jump in, Dominique, or you want me to? Yes, um, this is now leading and bridging to to the way how we um, how we did the setup for the class um, for the first time because we were thinking about how to bring student groups together. What was clear from the very first beginning on is um, was that we wanted to have joint groups, U.S. American and German groups, and as Ma Martha introduced, um, my class that I'm teaching 
um, is an international class. So we do have always 10 to 15 out of 30 um, international incoming exchange students from around the globe. So there's Asian students, there's African students, there's uh, American students, students from around the globe, but also, of course, from, um, from Europe um, coming to our place. And they have, of course, their different cultural backgrounds, both and educational backgrounds. So what we wanted to have is um, a, a most diverse setup of joint teams. And then we made use out of that Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is not a personal test, so you can't fail it, but you can select one out of 16 profile types. Um, this is why it's called the type indicator. I'm not quite sure whether you're familiar with it. Um, you have to answer a couple of questions and you see the link. So everybody joining that meeting today can, can access that link, it's for free. Um, it's, the, it's the light version of that type indicator. If you wanna have the, 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 the extended version, you have to pay for this. And then you get a report, a qualified report by the Maya Bricks team. But well, that one helps out to find out about your preferences. This is about preferences, right? So whether you're extroverted or introverted and so on. Um, this is how we start off with. Um, mainly um, both Martha and myself, we do our homework with our classes internally on each side of the ocean. And we figure out which types we have in the class. And then we try to staff, and that's your job, Martha, mostly because you do it in a brilliant way. We try to, 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 to um, set up the teams in a diverse manner so that extroverted, introverted, sensing, intuitive, thinking, feeling, judging, and perceiving types uh, within each team. And this enhances both creativity, but also it, it brings a bit more um, yeah, power within the team, I guess. I'm not quite sure whether the students uh, online, JT and Ada, may um, may uh, have some some um, some ideas how that uh, was brought to action in their teams when they later on talk about their experiences. But from my point of view, it's a very good um, tool in order to be used both from an educational background because you can teach it, but also um, the findings that you can staff and the teams in a very effective way. Yeah. And I just want to add to team-based learning is so important for what the work that Dominique and I are doing. Um, when I talk to employers about what are they looking for for graduates, what they tell us is that they're looking for students that have had experience learning about leadership, whether that be experiencing it through student life or in coursework where they're learning about leadership and what it means but also about are they working with diverse groups of people? And so this course definitely is something those students should be shouting about when they interview for jobs, putting on their resumes, because by all means, they are working with a team of half students from the University of Albany and the other half of their team is all uh, from Dominique's University. So the teams are very, very diverse. And the Myers-Briggs, we make sure that we really diversify the members of those teams based on their Myers-Briggs scores. I also want to add, there's lots of other assessments that you could possibly use to put people into teams. This has worked extremely successfully for Dominique and I. And so why disrupt it when it's working really great? But it's just one of the tools that I understand that you can use to put people into teams. One of the other things that we do for students, before they actually ever get to meet each other, we ask the students in the class to design one slide that has a picture of them on it, some information about them. And what you're looking at are two slides. I believe it was from our class last semester, Dominique. Um, That's right. Two individual, like this is an example. They get to design how they would like to introduce themselves to the rest of their classmates. And here's some great examples of how they do it. We do ask that you also include on that what your MBTI score is because it's reassuring to them that we are putting you into a diverse group setting where other people are not going to have the exact same MBTI score as you. So here you see two people. One has an ESTJ, Nikki is ESTJ, and uh, Radina is actually ESPF. So that's the, and they, each student does a beautiful job with their slides. 
So as Dominique had mentioned earlier, he teaches business. I have been teaching leadership courses. So I will teach like leadership theory or this particular class that equates to what we do here at the University of Albany is actually leadership in practice. It's a course where we look at case studies and apply leadership to that. So I have loved this as a case study. It's the Mount Everest 1996 disaster that took place. When I first met Dominique and I mentioned this to him, I learned so much about Dominique. There is no better person that I could find to teach this case study with. And Dominique will share with you his experience as you heard in his introduction. Not only does he have military training, but Dominique also does tours up mountains. And that's one of his um, pastime favorite things to do as a hobby. Uh, he does a wonderful job. And so to hear his stories of what it's like to be able to do these tours um, adds more value. It adds real life experience to talking about this whole case study. Um, it's a wonderful case study in the sense that you're learning about leaders, but you're also learning about followership. You're learning about effective communication and ineffective communication. You're learning about the value of strategic planning and sticking to that plan. You're learning about failure that takes place in leadership. And failure is a big thing to talk about when you talk about leadership. Because failure, yes, it's going to happen. It's what you learn from that. It's the lessons so that it's never repeated again. And we also Mark. talk about resilience. Oh, sorry. Yes. No, Marta, okay, we have a question in the chat that oh. it says Nancy Valencia is the introduction is by online. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. The if the introduction that if this introduction is by online, the, the introduction you may, were mentioned, I guess, about the students. Yes. So the whole and everything right now that we're doing is definitely online. COVID um, really has interrupted. There will be a day that we'd like, Dominique calls it a flying classroom, where we would like to bring our students to meet his students and his students to come to the University of Albany. Um, COVID has really impacted us that um, we don't have the pleasure of doing that right now. So everything that we're doing is definitely online. We use different platforms. We use um, Zoom for our meetings. We use Dropbox. Some students use Teams. They use WhatsApp. Um, they find many different ways to be able to connect with each other and to talk. Um, but predominantly for our coursework, it's Dropbox and Zoom yeah. that we use. Yeah. And so, yes, um, because of this case study, we're also talking about determination, resiliency, and teamwork. They also ask, Marta, if uh, synchronous or asynchronous or how sounds like a combination of both. Which, which ways do you use? Uh, synchronous uh, or asynchronous or a combination of both? I, I, I think we, we do it a synchronous mode when we do the weekly lectures. Yes. And as you need to know, there's there's a weekly lecture that we agreed on, which is um, morning, morning at Albany and yes. the afternoon in Germany because of the time difference. So we have to deal with uh, two different time zones. So we are six hours ahead from your point of view, um, no matter whether you're in Puerto Rico or in Albany, <laughs> the difference at that time. Um, and this is what we do synchronously. Yes. Um, so we do lecture. Um, one, one week Martha gives an input, the other week the input comes from my side um, or from a guest speaker like we had this week um, on Wednesday. It's always Wednesdays. Um, and then students do work asynchronously as well as they coordinate themselves, um, how they want to communicate with uh, with each other. And this will come up in a couple of slides, I guess, that communication is key, of course, yes. um, so that they need to get along with it and how to lead within the group. Because initially, and that was referring back now to that earlier slide that you showed, Martha, from the um, Everest disaster and that case study where we picked it, um, the, the overall question was, and this is how I, how I, found my motivation to take part in that experiment three semesters ago. And I asked myself the question, coming myself coming from a, a leadership background, both in the military, but also in civilian life, how can you really teach leadership in classrooms? Is that possible? And if yes, how? And the the idea was to, to somehow um, to, to somehow create a, a leadership environment, which is not artificial. 
of course, we have to use some cases where they apply, the students apply some theoretical knowledge to, um, to what happened in, in, in reality, like at the um, 1996 Mount Everest disaster. But however, the real leadership environment is what takes place each and every week in the groups. So the case study is one thing which is necessary in order to apply theoretical knowledge to a, uh, to a real case. But the, the overall really useful thing is the, the leadership pattern this, that was created by that joint teams. And that's synchronously, but also asynchronously um, when it comes to the mode that the teams agreed on, how they set up their leadership within the team um, towards the common goal. And it's probably good for us to mention too, Dominique. So what the team's project is, we're teaching them about the various different leadership theories and giving great examples. So their project is they need to identify two individuals from the Mount Everest disaster that took place in 1996. And the, we go through the whole case study with them. And then they have to apply a, a specific, we give each team a unique leadership theory that they then apply to the case study to show us where did that leadership theory surface? How did it, how was it applied to the two um, individuals that they've identified as a team that they'd like to work with? So as we meet Wednesdays, again, it's the morning, it's 8.30, 9.30 in the morning here um, in the US, but it's six hours later in Germany. So sometimes we're having our breakfast while we're watching them having their dinner, which is really cool. Um, they have to find time outside of class as their team to be able to connect as well. And to me, that is also an incredible, valuable experience because these students are getting to know each other and building a unique friendship, um, which we love. That makes, that makes this experience even greater. So let me go to your next slide, Dominique. There you mm -hmm. go. That was part of um, this slide is part of um, of last semester's presentations because the common goal of the, the team is to present their findings of the application of their belonging leadership theory to the case study. So the case study is what every team has the same, but the leadership theory differs, of course. Um, and they are also required to to do some reflection on how they got along with um, as a team. And that one shows here the team building and leadership roles and the actual situation and how they how they met each other and how they then proceeded in the in um, in that it's a seven to eight weeks cooperation because it's the end of the semester in the U.S. and it's the beginning of the semester in Germany. So we have to then do the second half of the semester afterwards, and the the the, the U.S. body they are gone. Um, and they are done with the semester afterwards. Um, but this is how, how the leadership roles are assigned and how the team building takes place within the teams. Um, and this is what it's really worthwhile to, to be considered because this is what it is about, right? This is the experience of leadership within the team, um, of self-leadership, but also team leadership that needs to be set up it's monitored by us, Martha and myself. We jump into breakout sessions as we coordinate after the uh, input sessions of each week. We do give them at least half of the time, which is, um, I think, good to join with their groups in breakout sessions, which can be, um, which is easy to, to, to proceed in, in Zoom um, technology wise. Um, we monitor the teams to a certain extent, but what happens there, their team building, their leadership roles is their responsibility. We do not have a grip on it, a real grip on it. All we can do is we, 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 may, we may observe whether a team is working efficiently and effectively or whether a team is dealing with some internal problems. This is what we monitor, um, but we let them experience the whole process so this is when now theory hits practice. Um, and also the, the other slide that comes next, Martha, I guess. Um, this is what it is about, right? You have to make decisions. This is what leadership is defined as, make decisions. That's maybe the, um, the greatest responsibility of each, 
of, of, of any leader to make decisions. Um, and as you can see here in the upper right corner of that little graph, um, communication was key. That's also a, a finding of, of the groups um, that they needed to, to get along with each other in order to communicate across the ocean, across the time zones, the time differences, across the cultural differences, which will be part of the next slide. But communication is key to that, right? Um, and also the taking over responsibilities of the tasks and being precise on this in order to then reach the common goal. Um, and what I think is, because I can compare it, I, I'll do the job in the university since 2013, as you mentioned in the beginning. Um, I had leadership courses before, which were rather theoretically, um, theoretically lectured in lecture rooms um, where they didn't make that much of an experience of leadership. Um, however, the reflection shows now that we hit the goal, Martha, I guess, because their reflections are about the key elements of, of, of a leadership environment. And that shows me that we are on the right track, I guess, in order to, to uh, contribute to, to the leadership personalities that should be somehow um, established throughout the course. And I just want to add to that too, Dominic. Um, so the students are learning about it through this case study, and we're hoping, and by the end, they're going to see, so now relate it back to your team. How did your team, not only are we asking you about how was communications, how was the responsibility of the task shared in the case study, but now let's talk about your team, and you're going to find that, yes, we're trying to get them to understand the dynamics of their team is also a form of leadership, and the role that they played on that team. So good, let me give you the next slide. That's always a, a big point. Marta, it is a way to see the slides uh, bigger because I see it like on a small. Oh, sure. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, yeah. Please. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Is that bigger? No, that's smaller, actually. Oh, that's smaller? <laughs> <laughs> but I, can you, you are not in the PowerPoint, right? Mode, as we practiced before. Because in PowerPoint, you can see the whole slide in the whole. Now we see like a small slide, but you see it small again. Let's see. Is that better? Okay, yeah. Okay. I, I'll, I'll let a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, there's a delay with my computer, so I apologize. All right. Not the problem. I guess we can see it all. Um, and it's, it's not about each and every word on the slide. It just shall show you how teams make use out of um, well known instruments like Hofstede's is cultural dimensions. It's well known all around the globe. And we didn't we didn't even tell them that they should should use Hofstede. All we told them is um, feedback and reflect on your on your experiences that you have made during those eight weeks of cooperation. Um, and that one shows the cultural differences, which are of course in place due to the fact that we are dealing with many different cultures, right? Um, which is of course. Um, also reality in, in nowadays world. If you look at any company of your choice, you will have some, some joint teams with um, having different nationalities, different cultural backgrounds. And this is what they need to experience and also to get along with different motivation levels, different engagement levels. Um, and this shows their, how, how reflected they are um, with, um, what I said earlier. And what they plan, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. <laughs> one of the last slides uh, out of student presentations before we come to, to live statements, I guess, Martha. Um, yeah. the, this is what it is about, I guess. This is what makes you so special, Martha said, um, what makes her proud and what makes me proud too. Uh, they do not just learn about leadership practices and theories. Um, because of um, reading that Mount Everest case study, which is a Harvard Business case study, by the way, available uh, through Harvard Business Publishers. So if you want to give it a try, it's a, it's a great story about uh, decision-making processes and failures in the mountains as a maybe an application field, but it does not depend on the mountains. It just depends on 
um, the aspects of leadership that are shown in a great way. However, they learn most to work together and to collaborate and to communicate within their groups. And there is no other choice, right? Ada and JT, there is no choice because you have to get along with your, with your uh, fellow students. And either you find a way or you don't. And if you don't find a way, you do not reach the goal, uh, which, is, which is a pity. Um, and we, ne it, we never happen to see um, a team failure since three semesters now. Right. Because the, the teams know exactly where to aim at and find a way how to, to um, reach their goals. Um, and this is, I mean, maybe the, the, the best outcome that you can have. And I want to add, too, that uh, U Albany starts our classes, um, I want to say six to eight weeks, depending on the semester, before the students at Dominique's University are actually starting. So the students are doing all this within an eight to ten week time period where they're meeting the new students from the other university, where they're having um, reviewing this case study and then having to have worked with their team come out with a, a presentation that they need to put together that's talking about the leadership theory they've been assigned, which is a lot of work in eight weeks. When I do go into breakout rooms, and Dominique, I'm sure you see this too, I love the fact that they're working on their team project, but they're also talking about other things, whether it be um, the weather in our two different cultures or countries or uh, political. There's all, so much going on right now in contemporary times. And so to be learning from one another about, you know, how are you handling that in your country? What's going on? Um, it's just very interesting to see that the students are able to engage really closely with one another and to really be exploring leadership, not only through the case study, but current affairs as well. Let me go to the next slide. We posted a couple of things. There have been such nice press releases out about us, which has been really good. And, and the work that we're doing, like when I gave a shout out to Annette Ritchie earlier, this is going on all the time through our COIL, through SUNY programs. But it's my first time going through it, and it's Dominique's first time. And again, I can't find a better partner. We just blend and we mesh perfectly. I, I think we make it fun for the students. We have gotten better with our teaching style each semester that we offer it. And I think it's because we have become more comfortable. We're more relaxed with what we're doing. Um, like even today, I'm having my camera technical issues. We have become adaptable and flexible. Should those issues happen during class, you work around it. You make it happen. You continue on. You move forward. Um, but we got some great press release. We also had, um, we've had different speakers come and visit with the class. Um, Dominique can talk about who came visiting this past week, uh, which was fabulous. But we've had our, the heads of our university, uh, Dr. Rodriguez, came. And I thought that was a fabulous experience because our president's dissertation was all about um, disaster management. How are you handling in times of crisis? What are you doing? And so when we talk about the case study with the Mount Everest disaster, that whole story is about two leaders taking their team of mountain climbers up the top of a mountain, but the two leaders end up dying. And so the teams have to decide, first of all, how are we going to save ourselves? And then, oh, yeah, we better. How do we save each other? And so followers all of a sudden need to kick it into a more active leadership style to be able to think quickly, swiftly, to be able to save as many lives as they possibly can, um, which is a crisis. So to hear the president come and talk about, yes, crisis management and how does that relate to the case study that you're talking about was an experience that was phenomenal to take place with the students. And then Dominique brought in an amazing speaker this past Wednesday. You want to talk about that? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we always try to, to do things differently from semester to semester and also to get better um, and to perform better, um, not only us as teachers, but also to integrate others. Um, this is what we did last week, um, th this past week. Um, we, we had a speaker um, who is um, the commanding officer of our German uh, mountain infantry troops, um, Brigadier General Mike Keller who is an old comrade of mine. We served together in two, two missions abroad. Um, and um, yeah, he, he spoke about his experience is more than 30 years of service now in the military, um, which has a lot to do with decision-making, 
with communication and also with um, some some meta reflection on on leadership and that was really patently obvious that he was talking about the very same very same ingredients the core elements of leadership that we taught uh, in class he was talking about communication he was talking about if, if you want to lead people, you need to like people. If you don't like people, you can't lead people. So he was rather talking about, Martha, I would even call it some soft facts of leadership, right? Um, that comes out of the heart of the leader. Um, and that was announced by, by a great military general. Um, that was really amazing to the class, I, I think. Um, this is what we try to do and also the um, the event that took place last semester with uh, your president of New Albany and our vice president of Munich, um, who, who spent more than one hour with our class and reflecting yeah. on leadership and on the core elements of leadership. And this is what brings the quality to the course. And it led to that students wanted to learn a little bit more about how your institution's handling COVID and how is our leadership handling COVID here at the United States and what were some similarities, some differences, uh, difference in understandings. It was a wonderful, valuable experience, which was really interesting. So good. The next slide I wanted to share is, if I can advance it. Um, at the end of our program, students, so Ada and JT, who's on, surprise, surprise, they get a certificate of completion. And the students have loved it because all of a sudden we see this certificate of completion appear on LinkedIn, and which is a beautiful way also that the students are connecting with one another. They're connecting with Dominique and I through LinkedIn. But we get to start seeing this certificate blasted onto LinkedIn with students so proud about being able to go through this experience. And again, it's giving credit to all the agencies that have come together to really work in partnership to make this experience happen for both Dominique, myself, and all the students. To date, I think, Dominique, we have about 160 students have gone through our program. This right. semester, we have the largest class ever. We have about 80 students that are in our class, 40 from each university. Um, and I think the Students are speaking so highly about the experience that it, at the U.S. here in New Albany, they don't mind having a class that starts at 8.30 in the morning because the opportunity to meet students in Germany um, sells it very easily for students to register for that time frame. So that's one example. We wanted to share with you, um, we did ask some students to provide us, we asked students to come today and um, for us in the United States, we are um, next week we are two weeks away from graduation, so it's a little bit of a busy time for students. But we wanted to share just really short videos with you about from our students. And here's one from Aiden Morgan. If I can get it to play. Hi, I'm Aiden Morgan. I'm a junior at UAlbany. And this course was my first opportunity being able to work with students from another country. Being that all of the students in the course were interested in leadership, I believe that it made this opportunity especially beneficial for everybody involved. And on top of that, both professors, our wonderful UAlbany professor and our German professor were so helpful and supportive, encouraging, which just made everything so easy. Thank you very much. Oh, Dominique, they love us. And this is Christian. <laughs> this is Christian Vitek. Christian was asked to join us today, but he's doing an internship in Washington, D.C., and he'll explain a little bit. I'm a science major. Global leadership is at the forefront, which is why I was so, so excited to take EEPL 370 with Professor Aslan, which allowed me in real time to connect with students not only from Germany, but from around the world and to expand upon, you know, language and culture and communication skills that are necessary for emerging young leaders. Hi, I'm Aiden Whoops, Morgan. I'm sorry, I'm a I didn't hit that again. Well, science major. Whoops. And then we asked students at the end too to give us some evaluations and write a description. And here's two students that gave us, um, Gianni wrote a beautiful long essay. We just took some things from it and I highlighted um, it was a new, exciting experience. Now, keep in mind, these students, especially at UAlbany, 
for two years had to study predominantly online because of COVID. So to be able to off, so, offer something that's a course that's a little bit different than the normal beaten path um, was an amazing experience. And so they love that opportunity. And then the other gentleman, the picture that you see, um, he's actually an opera singer. And so he has come to UAlbany for voice lessons and just to, to learn a little bit more and love this experience because it's something that he's never experienced before in his life, which whole different degree program, very different experience, um, which is neat. And then we have two more students we want to share. These two students were in our class last semester. Hi there, my name is Katarina. And my name is Sebastian. And as we have both taken a class, Globe Leadership, led by the professors Hammer and Asman, we are here to give a short review about our experience. The project was an exciting change to the regular university life as it combined theory and practice in a hands-on approach. Throughout the course, we did not just learn about leadership practices and theories by studying and analyzing the 1996 Mount Everest case study. We also experienced and learned the most by working, collaborating, and communicating within the mixed groups of both universities. In order to initiate the collaboration, we had to navigate through some challenges such as different time zones, coordinating large groups of students throughout the world, and communication over various platforms. Also, different levels of motivation and work attitude were noticeable and posted a rather great challenge. So, one reason for this was that the semester of the UAlbany students had already progressed further than ours, and we were only at the beginning. The performance record of the two universities were also different. Despite that, we think that encountering various challenges leads to people flourishing in their personal development, no matter their role. During this course, the question was raised as to whether leadership is innate or whether it can be learned. With hindsight on the group work, we have experienced firsthand that leadership can be learned up to a certain point, but not everyone is cut out for it. It became apparent that there are people who already display the strong characteristics of a leader, whilst others tend to take on the role of a follower. This might also be related to the individual's cultural background. Overall, the course was a great experience, and we were challenged not only as a group, but foremost as an individual, which we benefited the most from and which led us to outgrow ourselves, really. So thank you, professors, for this great experience. So by now, you're probably seeing the beautiful thing is all of us speak English. There is no, um, at Dominique's University, English is the primary language. Um, so it works out beautifully for us at UAlbany. That was my greatest fear as a teacher going into this experience is what if I'm partnered with someone where I don't speak that language or I don't understand or I'm not as fluent in it. Um, having all of our students speaking English and connect through that is wonderful. We do have several students that speak more than two languages, um, which is a beautiful experience. Hi. Whoops, I don't mean to go that way. Hi there. Um, so in March, this past March, we introduced our third time offering this class. And we did invite some of our students in the class who are also online watching, but we do have two students that were willing to step up and talk. And actually, um, I'm sharing with you all the slides that they presented. Um, they wanted to introduce themselves to their classmates, and they each made their slides. Um, so Ada, I'm going to ask you to go first if you want to introduce yourself and go ahead and talk. And if Hi, I everyone. Sorry, Martha, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so my name is Aida. Um, I'm obviously a student here at the University at Albany. Um, just a little academic background on me. Uh, I am a history major and I'm minoring in education. Um, so I want to do what Dominic and Martha are doing right now. I want to be a professor. Um, so in order to be a professor, leadership is a key component of that. And um, for a long time, I avoided taking this class. Um, I thought it would be a great experience, but personally, I thought um, the key to being a great leader was having confidence. And I really thought that was the main thing. Um, luckily, I have learned um, from Martha and Dominic that um, there's a lot more to it than just confidence. Um, having a good critical uh, thinking and decision-making skills is very important. Um, being self-aware and empathetic towards others. Um, and as our presenter last week um, um, explained, having a love for people is very important if you want to lead people. And just being committed to teamwork is like a vital component of making sure that you complete and you progress and you develop 
and you create something beautiful with others because um, nothing in this world is done alone. Um, regardless of if you're a leader or a follower, you have to work together in order to get things done. Um, so this project that we are currently doing, I think encapsulates all of those things. Um, as we talked about like the MBIT scores, um, you can definitely see those shining through in our groups. Um, the first time we all met each other, um, you could definitely tell who was the strong personality and who was more laid back, um, more in the more in the the, the background of uh, things. Um, but we personally, um, my team, I think we've done a very good job of getting to know each other and compromising and learning how to um, kind of go as Martha and Dominic do kind of learn from each other and build on the skills that we lack and then pass on the skills to others. So that's been a great um, thing from this um, whole course. Um, and my, my team's actually doing stuff on team leadership. So we're, work, we're doing a whole presentation on team leadership while we're practicing um, actually engaging in that leadership um, in our group work. So that's been awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know. This whole thing has just been an awesome eye-opening experience and I loved every second of it and I can't I'm really sad that it's over in two weeks um but I'm very grateful for everything that I've learned and um anyone that has the opportunity to take a class like this I strongly suggest doing it so thank you and thank you so much Ada because you bring your energy you bring your enthusiasm to that class every day which is nice thank you. I love yes I love it you, you talked <laughs> you talk thank about you so much and responsibility, which is critical. To be a valued member of the team, you've got to show up, you've got to be present, you've got to be a reliable individual on that team. And so you touched on those points that it's it's making you really become a better leader also because you're working with such a diverse team. So thank you very, very much for your points on that. Um, and then next up is JT. JT, would you like to go? Yeah, hi everyone. Can you guys hear me okay, first of all? Yes. Awesome. Just making sure. Um, well, I can't beat IATA. That was awesome. Um, I guess all that I want to add is that I have also had an incredible opportunity with this class. Um, I'm a freshman here at the University at Albany, and I'm a journalism major. And part of my identity as a journalist has always been telling people stories and learning as much about the world and other people as, as possible. And so I really saw this class as my opportunity to have much more of an international perspective. I only know English. I don't really know anyone in Europe or other countries. And so this is sort of one of my windows into just kind of expanding my own biases or, or decreasing my biases and, and expanding my worldview. Um, I know that I've had an incredible experience with my group so far um, of students from Germany, um, one of my new friends now from Finland. And it's just awesome, you know, as, as was discussed earlier, not only discussing the case study and my group is doing situational leadership about how leaders need to change their behavior and attitudes in certain you know dynamics and it's so cool just to talk about cultural leadership but also how their lives are maybe different from mine other than just the time difference you know while i'm just waking up they're exhausted and kind of going to bed um but on top of that it's just about you know what is it like being in you know your shoes your day-to-day -day life and you know it's kind of you know my group is very very, very fun and very um, accepting of one another. So like there are no stupid questions. So it's like, you know, anything that you genuinely want to learn about, like what's it like being in, you know, in the lives of a German student or an American student? So I never feel uncomfortable really trying to get to know my new friends. So I think that's been one of the best things that I've taken away from this course. And also the, the awesome leadership of Dominic and uh, Martha, um, I really appreciate and, and will take with me going forward. Oh, thank you, JT. Thank you very much. Um, can you give some examples of things that you've learned? Like, I, I don't know if it was your team or it might have been. I remember one time going into your um, session and I think somebody was taking you on a tour of their apartment to show. And so I remember the German students saying, wow, your residence hall, because here you are, you're calling right from your dorm room. Um, your residence halls are pretty nice and pretty big. And are, were there other things that you've shared? Or Ada, you can answer this too. Have there been other opportunities that you've really been able to explore things outside of like your everyday life as college students? 
I mean, last Zoom call, um, two of our group members did it from outside of their university. So like the sun was shining, the trees yeah. were were there. And so it, that alone gave me kind of a better insight into, you know, what do you see going into school every day? And, you know, I would see other friends, you know, walking alongside with their backpacks. And it was just cool to feel even slightly immersed in their college experience. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that was one example. Um, um, you know, I normally do my calls from my dorm room, so they kind of get maybe a less glamorous view of, of college life, but still, still fun nonetheless. Um, and yeah, it just, um, you know, we all have our cameras on also. Um, I know kind of going into this course, one of my fears was, you know, I've always been an extroverted, pretty outgoing person. So I think one of my initial fears is, you know, what if I'm the only one with their cameras on, but everyone else, you know, is is so nice and so, um, so outgoing and e equally as excited to talk with me and really focus on this project. So I haven't felt uncomfortable or like I'm, you know, the only one pulling my way. Like I'm with an awesome, dynamic, friendly group. Oh, thank you. Ayeda, do you want to share anything? Um, I can't really add much more to what JT just said. I think he summed it up pretty well, but um, we we are currently using WhatsApp to like stay in touch with each other and like to uh, coordinate meeting times and stuff like that. But we go out to like the city, like the German students will go outside the city and we'll go out in Albany and we'll like send photos to each other or we'll like send memes, like little funny gifts to each other. So like we're, we're I don't know, we're all becoming really good friends. And I think that's like another really great thing about this is like we're networking too. Like these could be our future colleagues um, maybe one day I collaborate with a German student and we do something like this. Like um, there's a lot of possibility and it's really great that um, we've gotten the opportunity to really get to know each other and not just as students, but as people. Yes, and in today's world, many, many businesses have diverse teams like this. So the fact that you're getting this experience in a college setting, you never know in the work world, you could have a team that's from all over the world and you have to learn how to connect. And you already have that skill set designed. Very good. Um, I wanted the last slide that we had was just to talk about some of the challenges and the strengths that we've had. Um, as was mentioned, time zones gets to be a challenge. Our very first semester, it was a funny, comical, could have been a disaster. But the US, we switched our clocks back uh, before they did in Germany. And so our students showed up an hour early uh, and the same thing. Same thing happened with Germany when the clocks got changed. So paying attention to the time zone difference and to the clock change is important. Our class meeting times, um, behind the scenes, Dominique and I had to work with our own institutions because there's certain time blocks at the institutions. And so we needed to find a time block and working with the School of Ed here, they were wonderful about helping me find the best scenario for our students to be able to fit in on a Wednesday morning to take a class on a Wednesday, for the German students Wednesday afternoon. Um, as you've heard, we've had some IT challenges. I will say early on in COVID, we had several students who did not have computers at home. So when COVID hit and we all of a sudden went to remote, our students had to go back home and take classes fully online. Some of those students did not have computers. So they were joining us through their cell phones and things like that. But thank God we had um, an emergency fund set up here at the University of Albany. We helped students get computers to be able to get the equipment that they needed to be able to thrive and survive um, during these online times, which was great. Um, the strengths of this program have really been, we all speak the same language, so that barrier is not there. We, um, we might have different dialects, but we get through that and we understand it. Um, diversity of the classroom is just fabulous and beautiful. Um, students from all over the world, which is amazing. Uh, the diverse experiences I think that Dominique and I both bring to the classroom has also been a wonderful, every day I go to that classroom, I'm learning something new and amazing. I learn from the students as well as from our speakers, but mostly I love learning from Dominique. Um, the energy level, I saw that there was a comment about that. That energy level that you feel today is exactly that same energy level every Wednesday that we have in our class. Um, the students come to this excited and ready and eager to go with their respective teams as well as with the class as a whole. And then the other thing I love that I've noticed, even if COVID numbers are bouncing up and down or not, our students who are still working because it's an online environment still come to join us. I, of all the classes I teach, even my classes now that I'm teaching in person, 
I don't have people say to me, can't make it to class today because I'm sick. Like even if they're at home sick, they want to sign on and come to this class. So it's really accessible and it's a, a reliable way of getting your education, even if you are at home, even if you're in your pajamas at home, or we've had people out walking their dog while they're in this class, like you get to see what's happening. Um, people still show up. So I find this method for teaching online to be one that's really reliable, accessible. Um, it's, it's, it's working and it meets such a diverse need that our students might have or bring to the class. Dominique, I don't know if you wanted to add anything about our students. There's, there's not much left for me, to be honest. <laughs> All being said and, and, and summed up by you guys, but um, what, what you mentioned, Martha, was also obvious to me. That was the only course in the first semester where everybody was trying to put on their cameras. And I had three other courses in the first semester in that summer, summer semester or spring semester um, in 2020 during the first lockdown. And to be really honest, that energy that was given to me out of the class because of the, the energy level of the participants, um, I could, could somehow try to, to, to get my head above water um, due to that course, because I could, could get so much energy back um, from the students and that somehow felt like a totally different atmosphere. And my vice president afterwards, when she joined together with you, President Rodriguez uh, at UAlbany, uh, when they joined our lecture, she gave me a call the day later and she said, what, what's, what's going on in your class? Everybody had the camera on. What did you tell them? I said, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> we, we just, we just um, asked in the beginning that it would be really appreciated if you would put your cameras on and they did. Yeah. And we didn't have to, you know, um, we didn't have to say that again. It is preset for that course and that energy level that Aida and also JT showed here in, in, in their statements now is really representative for the for the whole course. And this makes this special atmosphere. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to continue. Although it, it, it wasn't announced by uh, UAS7, then again from our side for the second semester, but we, we simply didn't care. So Marv and myself, we, we just said, oh, we will continue. Right. Um, and we received some great support from our institution, from COIL, from Annette, who was always there when we needed some support. And it was great. And this is because it always has two, two sides, the COIN, right? And an edge. And the yeah. edge is the, 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 the special atmosphere of, um, of that um, really wonderful class. And I would say to anyone that is a teacher, like challenge yourself, step outside of status quo and try a course like this because it feeds your soul. It is a wonderful opportunity to really get to know other people, regardless of how far away they might be or what country that they're in. Um, just recently, and I think it was this last Wednesday, Dominique, you and I were talking about um, some of the German students. Now keep in mind, it's their dinner hour. So they're at home relaxed they might be smoking their cigarettes online. And it's just so different for me, uh, you, you Albany, um, we have a tobacco free policy. And so it didn't even occur to me that a student could be sitting at home having a cigarette and enjoying it because I'm just of the culture and of the, the mindset that we don't see that anymore on campus because we just don't have it. But how beautiful it is that we are permitted to be in everybody's homes on these Wednesdays. We get to be in their residence halls. We get to be a part of their life. Um, even if it is only for the, the three hour class that we have every Wednesday morning. It's just a beautiful experience. So. Great, excellent. And so so I, I knew about this initiative because they present at the Best Practices Showcase uh, as well to faculty and administrators, but I didn't have the time to join you because I was concurrently with the board of directors in a meeting. But I'm so happy that I finally can definitely have all the details. And we started already the Q&A session and we have already one question for all of you. Well, I have two, but let me start with the first one. Luis Aleman asks, how could someone request admission? That's a good question. So right now you have to be registered at least at the University of Albany. Do you need to be registered for classes at your university, Dominique? You do, right? 
Yes, of course. Yes, yes of course. You meet, need to be immatriculated, and you also need to select, <laughs> which is a little little bit of a bottleneck. Uh, we do have mm -hmm. different majors, um, and only one major is taught in English only, and that's our major, international management. And on our side, this course, this this class is called global leadership, which applies best, I guess, to the class. Uh, but you have to apply for that course, and it's limited in terms of places. Um, Otherwise, you couldn't deal with it. I, I, I don't think we could make um, such, such mm -hmm. a good job with uh, 250 students. So right. we had to somehow limit wow. it. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't handle it. Also, material-wise, right. because we have to pay for the Harvard case studies, so we need to have budget for this, which comes, um, um, and that was the first round, which came from, from also from COIL UA7 Virtual Academy, where we can, could apply for, um, for the budget. Um, and now we, we do it from our budgets uh, from the universities, which is, um, which, is, which is okay, but you need to somehow manage it. That's a bottleneck. Yes, it is. So Peter, I'm reading your question too. Um, you're the high school principal in New York City. Yes, I'm gonna give you my contact information. I would love to connect with you about how our students might be able to work with your students um, to do a, pro a project or to talk about this experience that has happened. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent. Uh, uh, anyone else? Annette is helping you uh, put in the links and everything. So thank you, Annette, also for being there and helping uh, your colleagues, uh, Marta and Dominic, uh, giving more information about this excellent initiative. Luis Aleman say, in my case, I am a student from Ana Jimenez. It's one of the biggest uh, private schools in Puerto Rico. Is there still a possibility for me to enroll in a program for over there while, while I keep up my studies here? Bueno, I guess it's kind of, bueno, Marta, go ahead. Um, so yes, yeah, so we do require currently because it, you do earn three credit hours for the course you do need to be registered at the University of Albany. But I do believe we offer non-matriculate. So if you wanted to register for this one course and to take that experience, yes, as long as you're registered, you can participate in this course. Now, that's not to say Dominique and I might be willing to entertain some other opportunities or like a, a, you know, a one day stop in, let's do a program. Or I see the faces of JT and Aida right now smiling. Maybe they want to help lead. Um, uh, offset of this course with some new students, that would be a beautiful thing. I do see this growing. I see a wonderful opportunity here. One of the things that I found my very first semester was I had asked my class, how many of you have studied abroad? And only 10% um, had ever had an opportunity to go outside of the United States before. Um, and that broke my heart because I think everybody should have an experience where you are, um, I think it heightens your cultural awareness. I think you need to travel. Traveling is good for the soul. It fuels you. It's, you're, you grow in so many different ways that I couldn't even begin to explain. Um, and so the Center for Leadership and Service, before COVID, we used to do one week to two week courses where we would take students abroad and explore leadership in those different countries. But because we haven't been able to do that, this is another way that really, no matter what your needs are, you have a way to connect with people across the, the ocean and learn about different cultures and different individuals. Um, so yes, if you wanna register, we would love to have you do that. If not, we talk about other ways to be able to get you engaged. With I believe you put uh, yeah, their email, the la, at the last uh, slide, but also an AD, you can share either your email and it, because Annette is the one at the office, I guess, uh, the administrative person in charge of this, or also Marta, Amira. Ah, there is the, the links, uh, I mean, the email, so you can Bella, uh, start talking about that. Because here in the, in, in, on the participants, we have not only uh, students, we also have uh, faculty, and we also have uh, Bella, administrators, so probably, definitely, uh, they can, contact you and let's see and and if you need more information you can contact us at heads and we have all the Bella, all the different uh contacts as well to help you we would love to see this growing and this is a, an excellent experience we are running a little bit uh, uh, uh 
out of time and we don't want a, I, I see the number is going, going down and for the ruffle, you have to be present to win. So I want everybody to have the opportunity. Uh, there are more information in the chat. If you want another question, uh, Marta and Dominic can also reply you in the chat. But in the meantime, uh, please, uh, we would like to thank you, uh, tanto Marta and Dominic, uh, and also students, Aida and, and also uh, Stone, uh, for your excellent presentation. And also thank you for the participants for their Q&A session very uh, active. And now we invite you to uh, Stephanie. Uh, she's our consultant for marketing, excuse me, the head marketing and social media coordinator uh, to help us with the giveaway raffle. We have two different uh, raffles. One is for uh, the ones who follow the steps that we put it in the auto reply when you register and, and, and submit the evidence to enter to this raffle. Uh, Stephanie, go ahead to explain for the reference to everyone uh, the steps and then do this uh, raffle for those who participate. Go ahead. Yes, of course. Thank you, Juventus. So as you like to mention, um, I'm going to explain the step to participate in this raffle. Um, the deadline was from for yesterday, April 21 at 3 p.m. And the steps uh, were the first one is to follow or like us in our social media. The second one is to tag three friends in the comments in the uh, promotion of our of this event. And the third was to share the promotion uh, of the event. And the fourth, it was to submit the evidence in a Google form that we created. Um, and now, uh, and as you already mentioned, to win, you must be present during the raffle. So now I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to uh, show you the wheel, like the name of wheels. Yeah, uh, you just can't, if you heard your name, uh, you can either activate your microphone and say I'm here, or you can put it on the chat. Both of, of, uh, of those forms are valid to make sure uh, and let us know you're present. Okay, now get ready for the spin the wheel. Uh, we are ready to announce the winner. After spinning the wheel with all the names that submitted the evidence. So the first prize is a Amazon gift card of $25 each. We're gonna Select two winners for that. And the first one is Hilmari. Yeah. Hey, She's our um, student ambassador at UPR. Hilmari, hey, are you here? I don't tell me you left. I think that she's not here. Oh my God. No, I don't see. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, but rules are rules, so go ahead. Now the others have another opportunity. So let's see. Someone else, okay. Juliet. From Juliet? Tennessee. Juliet Aleman from Tarrant County College Connect Campus. Are you here? Ah, mira, sí, she's. She's here, so Karen, could you please write down the name? Juliet is the first winner of the first Amazon gift card of $25, and let's go to the second one. And the rest don't go because for the rest of the participants who enter in the link their information, we have another raffle for those who are still here with us. Please Emily don't go. Santiago from American University. Emily, are you here? <laughs> Gracias, Dominic. E Emily, are you here? You can either write on the chat or activate your microphone. Mm -hmm. I don't. Let me see if she's here on the. We have on Emily's iPhone. Emily. Ah, see, sí, that's true. But is she? Is is she? Emily, advance. 
no, let's go for another one because the rules are that you have to be, make sure that, you know, let us know that you're present. And we are not sure if you are Emily, the, the, the Emily is a common name. So let's have uh, the third, I mean, uh, the second. Okay, let's see. Kevin Rivera. Kevin, are you here? Yeah, Kevin is here, so we have a winner, great. All right, first congratulations to the winners of this giveaway to hope you can enjoy the cards. The gift card will be sent by email through uh, with the information you provide us when you uh, submit the evidence uh, next week. So wait for that. And then uh, to finish and to conclude our event, let's do a raffle of three more gift cards uh, of uh, Amazon gift cards to the rest of the participants who were attending today. So let's put the, the wheel with all the names. And in the meantime, Dominic again, and Marta, thank you so much for your excellent presentation, your time. And also to the students who share their, uh, their experience in this initiative. Uh, we still have people come, come and go. So please make sure you stay so you can win the next three Amazon gift card. Stephanie, we don't see the wheel, but in the meantime. Yes, my computer is a little bit. Okay, in, in the... Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, there is someone who wants to load this. Do you want to say something? Okay. Oh. But uh, in the meantime, Stephanie is putting the wheel back uh, with the names of all participants during this. Uh, we want to uh, remind you that all that submit their names, they will be uh, receiving the certificates. Please allow us at least two weeks to receive it because you know there is a lot of uh, uh, things going on and, and sometimes we have a few time uh, to prepare this properly. So please be patient. And if you don't receive it uh, from the, during the next two weeks, please uh, feel free to follow up with, with us. Uh, we just want to remind you, the ones who are faculty and administrators, we have an upcoming event on next Thursday, April 28th. Uh, with the title of Hybrid Mixed and Combined Population Teaching Post-COVID-19 Methodologies with Dr. Jose Ferrer from UPR. And we also have our last uh, webinar uh, for students, focused on students, it, that will be in Spanish, uh, will be Friday, May 13th, uh, uh, and it's about uh, Presupuesto Personal Familiar, Herramienta Financiera de Éxito, with Eugenio Garcia uh, Perez, Professor of Colegio Universitario de San Juan, and also an authorized public accountant. Remember that to register, you just need to uh, click on the next event area on the homepage, uh, register to receive the link. Now we have the wheel, uh, and let's see if we have people here. Since you, so we can conclude. Remember also to uh, follow us in social media so you can definitely uh, learn more about our services and next event. Alondra Valeria Gonzalez from Nook University. Are you here? Yeah, the link of the certificate, Jan Jamira, was, uh, if you go up on the chat, you will see it. We put it several times. Karen, if you put it again, we will appreciate it. Alondra, are you here? Yes, give me a moment, please. Okay, no problem. Remember that if you don't submit your name there, you will not receive the, the certificate. Alondra, I think she's not here. It's a shame. So next. No, I don't see. Yes, she is. She is. Ah, she is. Okay, but you, yes. you, you have. Thank you. Okay, okay, Alondra. But you will receive by email the link to download your twenty-five dollar uh, Amazon gift card. So congratulations. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Valeria. And you are from which institution, Valeria? Um, no, University. Ah, I, I see. Bella, sorry that it was on, on, on the. <laughs> 
so sorry. Kevin is the second. Yes, Kevin Joel from Ana Jimenez as well. Kevin, are you here? Kevin at one. Kevin at two. Kevin, are you here? Let me see in the list. Sí, yes. contestó. Yes. Ah, okay. You just won. Yeah, but that's that's the rule. You're here, and you, unless you want to volunteer, give the that that you can win twice because you do you follow the steps and then you were here as a participant. So, do you want to voluntarily release your second gift card to another participant? Yes or no? Ah, okay, well, no problem. Thank you, thank you, Kevin. So this car will be for another uh, participant. So thank you, Kevin, for your kindness. So go ahead and let's see. We have two more then gift cards. Qué lindo, sí, muy amable. Annette, totally agree with you. Jason, okay, no. Jason. Jason from Ana Jiménez a Bayamón, in Puerto Rico. Are you here, Jason? <laughs> Qué lindo. Thank you, Kevin. Jason at once, at two. Let me see if I, I see a Jason here. Mm. No. Okay, pues, let's go ahead. No, I don't see any Jason in the participant list. Okay, the next one is Frances Ocasios from Manaji Mendes. Frances, are you here? Frances? Oh, yeah, she is. So we have a second winner. So we only have one left, one gift card left. So congratulations, Frances, from Ana G. Mendes. You, you, you will receive the link to download the gift card uh, next week. And the last one is for, let's see. Aha, uh -huh, Jose Luis Jimenez, Universidad Católica. Andres Bello, that's in Colombia, right? Is that correct? Jose, are you here? Let me see, Jose Luis. Jose, Jose, Jose. Jose. Oh. Venezuela. Ah, Venezuela. Estás aquí. Is that you who talk? ¿Quién habló? ¿Quién dijo Venezuela? Ah. Uh, Ay, bendito, what a change. Fue Rusa Ru. Ah, es profesor. Oh, I see. Gracias, Anet. Okay, but the last one goes to. We still have 89 people here, so we have others to win. Lorraine. Lorraine, are you here? Ah, mira, she's here, so great, congratulations. Mira, just in time, just one minute uh, uh, ahead, uh, 3.31 here. So we, with this, we just finished uh, this Student Leadership Showcase. And again, please follow up in our social media so you, uh, we will announce when the link of the recording is ready. So you can either go ahead and go back and and check, check out the video, or you can share it with others that were not able to join us. Also, go to our uh, next event tab on the homepage, so you can see the rest of the events we have for this semester, and register. And thank you again to Marta, Dominic, and the students who came uh, uh, to uh, join them in the presentation. Uh, Oh, thank you so much for your time. And remember that uh, during this, yeah, those are the, the events. Uh, uh, this is for faculty and administrators next Thursday 
at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. This is one hour webinar. And the second one is for uh, focus on students, but we also invite faculty and administrator because the topic is is a finance, you know, a budget that everybody needs that in our lives. So that's gonna be on Friday, May 13th. That's gonna be in Spanish as well. And follow us in the social media and please uh, help us evaluate this event and also uh, help us identify the best ways to promote our services and also share your recommendations and ideas, how we can uh, continue serving you. And you will receive the link for a survey, everybody who, who participate. So please let, uh, give us five minutes to complete that uh, survey so we can have this information from you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend since today is Friday and have a great day. And Marta and Dominic at HES, we are Vela, available. If you may think we can collaborate in any of these initiatives, please count on us. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Karen, for helping us giving the, the code for the students. And we hope to see you in our next event. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Likewise. Bye -bye. Take care.